In this tutorial, we're going to take the movement of one object and use it to move two further objects in the opposite direction to each other. On the screen we have two lifts, lift A and lift B, both with platonic objects mounted upon them. In front of them we have a hydraulic ram. When the ram is pushed inward, lift A will lower and lift B will rise, and when the ram is pulled outward, the opposite effect will take place. Let's open the Expresso Editor and start work. Our first task is to restrict the motion of our RAM object, so we'll drag that into the Expresso Editor and at the output stage give it coordinates, position Z. And we'll make it a little bigger, as per usual. And as we've done before, we're going to use a clamp node to restrict the motion. So we'll bring that in there and plug our RAM object's output into the value. Before we continue, we'll just check our RAM's position Z and we can see that it currently resides at minus 100 meters. So the minimum value for our clamp node will be minus 100, and then zero is fine for the maximum. The last thing we need to do is bring in the RAM object again, and at the input stage, give it position Z, and then connect the output of the clamp to the input of the RAM. And that completes the first stage of our expression. And of course, we know that as with the stirrup pump, when we now move our ram in and out, it behaves exactly as we want it to. Our next step is to bring in a range mapper node. Once again, we found a use for one of these. Position that there, and we'll wire the clamp's output into the input. And now we can think about setting it up. Our input lower will be minus 100, obviously, and our input upper, zero. Now on this occasion, we need these two to be percentage values. So we'll come up to our output range here, click on the menu and select percent. And we can see that it's set up perfectly for us. We've got 0% in the output lower, 100% in the upper, exactly what we need. So that's set up. We now need to bring in the key node for this expression, the one that makes it all work. And it's a node we haven't seen before. So it's new node expresso, calculate, mix. It's a mix node. Just place that one there. And we actually need two of these, so I'll copy this one and place that one beneath the other. And we'll have a quick look at the node. This is another example of a node that cannot be modified in any way. You can neither add ports nor take any away on either side there. On the left hand side we have three inputs, a mixing factor, input one and an input two, and on the right a single output. The mixing factor is a value between 0 and 100% and you can see it over here. And that's why we've set the range mapper up as we have. And we can now wire the actual range mapper's output to the mixing factors of both our nodes. The inputs are going to be the minimum and maximum heights of both our lift objects. So we can start setting those up now. I'm going to use the first mix node to control lift A. So in our parameters over here, we can set input 1 to 100, which is the maximum height of the lift. And then input 2 we can leave at 0 because that is the minimum height. And the second mix node we just have to do the opposite with because obviously lift B starts at its lowest point and then ascends. So that's the way we set those two up. The mix node actually works by using the mixing factor to blend between the two input values. So for example, if the range map were outputting a value of 50%, the mixing factor would also be 50%. And at the output stage, we'd get a value of 50 because obviously this is halfway between 0 and 100. So that's how this works. The last thing we need to do here is drag in both our lift objects. So we'll do that now. And we'll place them one beneath the other. And at the input stage, we'll give them coordinates position, position Y. Just do that now. Position, position Y. Sort those out there. And then we'll wire the outputs from our mix nodes into the inputs of both our lift objects. That completes our expression. And now if we select our RAM object and move it, hopefully everything will move as we've planned and indeed it does. That's perfect. The beauty of this is that we can physically see the mix nodes actually doing their job. So it's quite a good way to illustrate all of this. That's great. That completes the tutorial. So we'll do a quick recap over what we've done. 
As with the stirrup pump, we've used a clamp to restrict the motion of our RAM object to values between minus 100 and 0. We've used a range mapper to output a value of between 0 and 100% on this occasion. We've plugged this into the mixing factor of our mix node, which has then used this number to blend between the two input values and make the lifts ascend and descend as need be. And then these values have been passed to the actual lifts themselves in order to complete this and make it all happen. So that just about wraps things up. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's been quite fun doing it. And I'll see you very shortly on the next one.